Welcome back, folks, to part two of the Walwart Eliminator Project. Uh, a couple of you were mentioning in the comments uh, about centering these jacks into the panels. And um, you had suggested using O-rings. Uh, but I did try O-rings. I used these ones here, but they're too thick. Like the thickness of the ring itself is too thick. They're the right size to go around it. But once you tighten them up, they'd splay out and split. And they didn't hold the jack in the center anyway. But I did find something that did. So what that is, is a solder. I use a, a little ring of solder in there. I don't know if you can see it. But it's this uh, 0 0.6 millimeter solder that I have. And uh, you just wrap it around there and tuck it in real tight. Let me show you how I did that. You take a piece, wrap it around. And it, the important thing is to tuck it in nicely into the groove. Once you got enough on there, you cut it. You can leave it like a sixteenth or thirty second of an inch, millimeter thereabouts of, of gap on the end. That's no problem at all. And the key thing though is to get it tucked in really, really tight in there. Then you fit it into the panel. Now it doesn't fit in right away because uh, it's a little bit bigger than the hole, but if you just twist it around a couple of times, back and forth, it'll, it seems to kind of almost snap into place as the, the solder forms itself to the shape of the hole. And then you just bolt it up. And this is the result. Look at that. Perfectly centered. Far more aesthetically pleasing. And this is, you know, this is a, a testament to having comments in the in these YouTube videos where you can exchange ideas and I just want to thank everybody who comments on my videos it really means a lot to me and uh, you know, sharing of information is uh, one of the best things all right so the next thing to do is begin wiring all this up uh, I'm going to begin with the chassis and go from there so let me get that done and we'll come right back okay so we got the chassis is all wired up here that took a lot longer than I, I anticipated. Been about an hour and a half at it. And had a couple of uh, interruptions, somebody coming to the door, phone ringing, and long conversations. But anyway, um, because of that, I may have to split this up into three parts, but uh, let, let's see what we can do. Uh, I hope these will, will actually fit over this way. This has got to be able to plug in yeah, so we should, we're fine there. That'll plug in right there. All right. Uh, I guess we better get on with this part of it and uh, uh, solder that up. And then, of course, the back panel. Actually, I'll probably do the back panel because it's already over there on the soldering bench. Okay, I've got that back panel. It's all done up. That, it also took a, a lot longer than I had expected. Yeah, and there's all these little bits of wire in here and I'm a little dissatisfied with the kind of the way it's turned out. Um, what I should have done, if I ever build another one of these, is I'll order up some little PCB boards that will go over these and connect them up. That would have made it a, a lot more um, aesthetically pleasing and a heck of a lot easier to, to, to build, a lot quicker build. But anyway, it's, uh, it's ready to go in, and I'm going to connect up the basic power here, and then I'm going, to, I'm going to power the thing on and just check the voltages on the power supplies individually, and uh, we do a couple of other little checks before we get on with the, with the front panel. Okay, we're partially assembled now. We have the base plate is attached to the frame again, and we have the back panel into the frame, and we've connected up the power input up to the EMI filter on the input side of that. So now I'm just going to do some sanity checks. I have that plugged in properly. Okay, so let's go between here and here. Nope, nope, nope. Okay, that's good. Now between uh, neutral and neutral, good. Follow through, good. All the way to the power supply, 
Good. The same for ground. Good. Good. The chassis. Good. Good. Between ground and neutral. Between ground and line. Good. No shorts. Let's try between line and neutral in here. No. Let's turn the power on. And now check between line and line. Good. 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 Between line and ground, line and neutral. Okay. It looks like we have sanity. All right. I have a, the power input is hooked up to the EMI filter, which is hooked up to the power supplies. So we are going to turn it on for the first smoke test. Everything else doesn't look, there's not low shorts. All right. Let's, uh, let's power it on. All right. All of the LEDs have come on. So now we're going to check the voltages on each of these to see if they're around by right. This one should be five volts. Okay, perfectly right on. I'm really enjoying this little Kaiwitz meter. I mean, it's it's so small and handy. Uh, if you're just doing some quick checks like this, it's, it's, it's absolutely perfect. Now, this one might be a bit more of a challenge to get into it, but I think I can get there. 9.04, we'll try to adjust that a little bit. And then this one over here should be 12. <clears throat> 11.97. 12. Okay. Now, so another thing I want to do is I wanted to measure the AC voltage to chassis ground. Uh, put in some uh, type Y capacitors to try and reduce this as much as possible. So we'll see what we, we're getting. Yeah, 10 volts. That's not great. It's certainly not great. How about on this one here? Only 2.8 on the the other supply, the 12 volt supply. But the 5 volt supply has got a little bit. It should be the same on both terminals. 11.25, 11.2. Yeah. So there's a little bit of a noise coming out here. Now there's no load on them so they tend to be a little bit noisy when there's no load on them. I imagine that'll drop. We'll test that uh, when we get the whole thing completely configured. All right then, onwards and upwards. I will have to say though, I know it's taking this, the, the, the effort involved in this has been quite high. Uh, I suppose uh, anything that's worthwhile it's going to have a fairly high effort involved in it. At least I tell myself that. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to do the front panel similarly, and then we'll join up any wires that need to be joined up. All right, there's the front panels all wired up. First, I cut the black wires off of each one of these because they're they're common with, with these black wires. So if you hook them up the way I'm going to hook them up, you don't need that additional ground for the meters. And now it's just a matter of mounting up the front panel and connecting up all the appropriate connections here. Everything out of place and everything in its place. This uh, meter here is a little bit loose. Uh, before I, I wrap it all up, I probably put a little bit of hot snot on there to hold them into place. Look at that, centered. Ooh. All right, do we, uh, do we turn it on to see if we get the right voltages? Let's do that. Let's uh, plug it in and uh, turn it on. See what we get. There, there we go. 11.9, 9.02, 4 4.99. Now these meters can be adjusted too. So what I'm probably going to do, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bother taking you guys through it, is uh, I'll set the voltages on the power supplies. So I'll measure them, and then I'll measure, I'll adjust these to match. Also the current, the current's adjustable too. So. And, you know, look at that, it goes back, it jumps back and forth between watts and amps. That's really nice. They're slick. Very nice. Very, very nice. Okay, so let me uh, let me hook up a load. I'm probably just going to use a, a, 
a five ohm or two ohm resistor here. That'll give me two and a half amps. And I use 10 ohm resistors on these two here. And um, we'll have a look at uh, what the meters do. Okay, so it's on and working. I'm going to adjust the voltages down here. And um, yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'll adjust the voltage on the meter as soon as I can find a screwdriver small enough. And uh, I'll do that off camera. I made up this cable here, which I'm going to use to put a load on it. And I'm just going to connect this up to my DC load over there and you know, change the resistance accordingly for each of the outputs. And then I'm just going to run around all of them and check them out. Just make sure that they all work. Okay, I've got it hooked up to a 2.5 ohm. Let's see what we get here. 1.64 amps. Now imagine this, this is a fairly, this is seven feet of uh, number 18 cable, so it's going to have resistance. And there is a discrepancy between what this is reading and what the the load is reading. So the load is reading 1.78 amps. This is reading 1.64. So yeah, the current needs to be adjusted on them. Yeah, check this other outlet here in the front. Yeah, it's the same. All right, good. I'm going to go and uh, change that load to I will do four and a half ohms. We'll try to get two amps up there as well. All right. This might be better if I have something to put it up on here. There we go. Okay, same situation. Um, so what's the... This one's a little bit more accurate because it's reading the same as the load within uh, 10 milliamps. So that's fine. This one does not need adjustment. The other output working. Yes, it is. All right, and we're going to go up. I'll go up to six ohms for this one. Let's see what we get here. Six ohms, 1.88 amps, and yeah, and the load is reading 1.89. So this is this one's okay too. This one's the only one that needs the current adjusted on it. Current reading. Does this one work? Yes, it does. So I'm just going to quickly uh, bounce around through all the outlets on the back. I'm not going to be able to show you that. Um, unfortunately, and uh, just to make sure they're all working, and uh, we'll come right back and adjust the voltages on the power supplies. Okay, here we're all set up. I'm measuring the voltage at the output on the back there. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set these up a little bit high. So I'm going to set up the five volts to be 5.1, the nine volts to be at 9.2, and the 12 volts to be about 12.3. Yeah, that's just to make up for any losses that might be in the, the small cables that be going out to any of the devices that I'm using. By the way, we're, we're switched back now to the microphone in the phone because of what happened earlier. That's pretty good there. Yeah, the front we're reading 5.11, so the voltage really doesn't have to be adjusted on the 5 volt range. Now let's go over to the 12 volt, the 9 volt range. That looks pretty good. Is this one even adjustable? I don't see an adjustment point on that particular supply. So this one is a, a non-adjustable. What we got is what we got. Brian is reading 9.01 volts and the voltage on the meter, the front reading 9.02. That's close enough for this purpose. So. Uh, no volt adjustment here, no volt adjustment here. Let's continue on to the 12 volt. Okay, so we'll... that's in agreement with the panel meter at the front as well. So let's, um, let's get this up to 12.3 thereabouts. That's a little finicky. Don't have to worry much about it. Okay, so the meter on the front here is saying 12.2. So, I, you know, I'm not going to worry about a tenth of a volt. So it's just a current reading on the 5 volt side that needs to be adjusted. So that's good. That's, at this point, I'm not going to do any further testing on this. I will want to test um, for noise. 
just run them through some simple tests just to make sure. I know they're going to be way better than any of the wall warts, so that's, you know, it's not that important. So if you guys want to see it, just leave a comment down there and, and I'll make a video on that when I do it. So now I'm just going to check the leakage voltage with respect to ground that I have a load on it. So it'll go. So yeah, four volts. That's very respectable. Let's see on the nine volt side, what we're getting there. Uh, about two volts. And on the 12 volt side, uh, 1.3 volts. That's that's pretty actually that's pretty good. So let me let me show you what a, a, a typical switching wall wart will do. 53 volts. So you know a lot of these wall warts that I'm using here, I just I just don't like using them. That's why I built this. They're noisy, they got high leakage voltage, and they're just not well made. This is very tame in comparison. I've done uh, tests on, on these more sun supplies before. They come out excellent. They come out way better than their published specifications. So I don't expect these to be very noisy supplies at all. And uh, we have put the additional capacitors on as suggested by them for quiet environments. And I've put the wide capacitors from the negative DC voltage to earth ground to reduce leakage voltage as much as possible. So let's put the top back on this and just view it in all its glory. Well, there it is in place. All that rippling that you're seeing on the displays, you don't see that in real life. I guess it's just something to do with the update rate of the camera itself. But yeah, that's all really nice and steady. And they're, they're all very evenly lit, except for this one here is a little bit brighter than the rest of the red digits. But there it is in place. Now he's got to make a whole bunch of cables up and replace all of my wall warts. That's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, okay. Nice addition. I think it's going to work out well. And uh, like I say, if you want me to do a video on testing it further to see its noise and all that sort of stuff, it'd be a short video. I could do that. But uh, only if you guys are interested, let me know down in the comments. And uh, thank you very much for coming along for this build. I hope you got something out of it. I know I did. I got that. <laughs> And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.